It's day one of the UK Games Expo. Can't stop, gotta keep walking. We've gotta to get to the bring and buy again. Well, we've made it to the almost front of the queue of the Bring and Buy. That's the, that's the entrance there, and we're standing here. Um, but the queue is now already extending back way down to this mission hall. I'm not quite sure how they can fix the Bring and Buy, but there must be a way to, to make this work better. Um, but hopefully, I'll be able to pick up some bargains in there, drop off and clear some shelf space for all the games we're inevitably going to buy in there. So it's kind of a recycling board game process. <laughs> So this is what it looks like on the other side of the bring and buy. So you check in your games, they go on the shelf out there to then be put out there after you've queued for a long time. But there's a slight floor in the system beyond the other floors in the system in that you obviously bring bags to bring your games in. However, you then have to lose your bags to then go to the other side to start buying. Not quite sure how to square that circle, but um, at least the games are in there and uh, we'll see how we get on. We might sell them all and have a bounty of money to spend at the bring and buy, but let's, fingers crossed that will happen. Now the expo is open for just a few minutes really, um, and I'm time to make my annual impulsive purchase. So I have them hunting for a copy of Boop for me. They may be available elsewhere, but if I don't go home with Boop, I'm going to be very sad. So supporting our friendly local game store when we actually are no longer local, but they're still friendly. Because they, they, they got boot for me. So my first appointment of the day is to meet up with Play For Keeps, who, again, who I know best from uh, Overstocked, uh, a game that came out last year, which I came out at the expo. Uh, but they've got some new games to show me, so let's learn about some string rails. Every time it's those kind of unexpected gems that really grab you. So I've just been playing String Railway with Play for Keeps. Uh, on a surface, it looks quite a simple, almost childish game, but there's some real depth and uh, some scoring opportunities in it. So a really fun game. Uh, open and playable in sort of 30 minutes, simple rules to explain, kind of that ideal filler game. But now it's time to change the t-shirt and actually do something very different. Every day at the Cosmos stand is the Dodo World Championship, which I'll be comparing. So if you're at a loose end and you want to release the egg, make sure you head to Cosmos at 11 o'clock. So change the t-shirt and start trying to drum up some enthusiasm. We've just had the uh, first ever World Championship of Dodo. <laughs> um, I think it went really well. It was lots of fun. Uh, people are taking it, it kind of got the joke, which is always good. Um, you know, taking a child's game far too seriously. But um, yeah, lots of fun and a really good atmosphere about it, which I really enjoyed. Um, but yeah, obviously a bit, bit nerve wracking uh, going back to sort of comparing again. Um, I haven't done it for a long time. enjoying Deep Sea Adventure with my children and um, exclusively on Game Stand is the expansion for Deep Sea Adventure uh, which, which adds a new dice, you take one away, add one in, uh, which changes the uh, kind of mechanisms of how quickly you can catch up and how deep you can go. You drown more but also you save yourself more so it's a kind of good balance. Um, nice little, little pick up you don't often see and I do like just to kind of grab these interesting curios that you find here.
Lisa Moan, I've been really looking forward to the whole expo. I'm going to be going to play Lupia as a prototype copy, but um, I'm sure you're aware of how much I enjoy Distilled, so I'm really lucky to get this place to play this really early prototype. Um, and yeah, really excited about it. It was in my list of 10 games I was most excited about, so it's good, it's good to actually see if I had a reason to be excited in the first place. So what can I tell you about Lufia? Well, it's a kind of mixture of push your luck, bidding, uh, worker placement game with what's going to be some fantastic art from Vincent Dutre. You know, you can feel the uh, the echoes of Distilled in it as you're playing, which obviously is fantastic for me as I very much enjoyed Distilled. But it feels almost like a Lasada game as you are kind of calculating the best options you have and how much weight to put on the chance of you being able to achieve those goals. It's going to be a stellar game. Uh, I, can, I can already tell that, and I just I'm going to enjoy seeing the development of it uh, from this very early prototype to what's going to be a very luxurious production if Distilled is anything to go by. You might remember back, uh, I enjoyed watching the production process of the steel, so it's really great to be involved even earlier than that to see it go from these, you know, food chain magnate style uh, drawing on a board to turning into what's going to be a beautiful, beautiful game. The moment is upon me. I've, I've, I've put it off as long as I could, to be honest, uh, so I knew what I had to spend. And as, as we said in so many videos, you don't need to rush here straight away because the teams at board games are particularly flooded, particularly this year, where there's been a queue for hours and hours and hours to drop off the uh, green line. Uh, but as always, it's cash only, no bags in there. Remember that before you come in, because they will remind you lots of times before you enter. Uh, looking for Micro Macro, I've got a list of Libby games because she's on the Cosmos stance and can't join me. But there's going to be something in there, isn't there? I'm in, I've made it, and um, you know, the benefits of coming at this sort of time is it's not completely crowded. Uh, so, yes, as before, lots and lots and lots and lots of shelves. I think it's actually bigger this year, uh, which makes sense considering the amount of people are bringing things in. Uh, nothing really, no gems so far, but I've only been in this sort of 10 minutes, but I have seen Sleuth. Now, this is three pounds, I think, three pounds. Uh, and if you remember last year, I would take a, a ridiculous punt on a, on a silly game that was potentially rubbish. Could this be it? There's plenty more to look at. Now I vaguely remember a game in TK Maxx that was for sale for sort of £12. It's called Comanauts and uh, there's quite a few of them here. seeing bargains and also seeing the retail potential which isn't really in the spirit of this bring and buy um, clearing your shelves ethos but uh, people take it differently I suppose. It's funny how tastes change I mean that wouldn't have been so long ago I would have seen this in here and I would have thought oh that's the holy grail but now back on the shelf. There's so many games here that are still in shrink wrap, which makes you think about, uh, you know, the culture that surrounds our hobby. You know, are people feeling the fear of missing out and they must buy? There's so many Kickstarter editions here that are gloriously wrapped up in cellophane and, and proudly saying everything you can possibly get that are unopened. It's a shame that there's so many games on shelves that have been bought and then kind of never played with and then sold on either for a profit or just to clear the shelves. But that being said, there are, of course, some fantastic bargains here. Always be mindful of just have a quick look on, on board game prices to see, you know, if what you think is a fantastic bargain is actually the fantastic bargain. But I look high, look low, because there's probably something in here for you. So, shrink wrapped. 50 pounds. 
Unshrink wrapped. 15 pounds. Ooh, tricky decision. Of course, you don't need to worry if you haven't got what you wanted. All of these are going out. Ready for tomorrow. Well, I've made my choices and now I've got to pay the price. What have I got? I can't possibly tell you until I told Libby first, but I'll give you a clue. Three are by the same designer. So next up in my day, I am meeting with Vincent, who is doing Astro Navigators. Now, if you remember back to uh, an earlier video we did where we talked about the 10 games I'm most excited about at the UK Games Expo, Astro Navigators was on there. It's a game that not enough people are talking about because it grounds real science into a kind of worker placement game. And I'm, I'm really excited to find out more about it. and it not only meets your expectations but exceeds them in every way. Uh, I was so excited by Astro Navigators but then having seen it and have talked with the developer about how good it's going to be just makes me want to play it even more and we're going to have some more content about that on our channel uh, in the future uh, but it just feels like a labour of love and that just oozes across all of the components and just, just the infusion that someone has when they're talking about it. And the attention to detail that you get this. Everything is grounded in proper science, albeit, you know, with, with animal astronauts. This guy, by the way, based on Patrick Moore. So, after a busy day, you've had a busy day Very of, of playtesting. We are united. You're probably bored of watching my face. So, let's show Livy what we picked up by the bring and buy. Right, this is, I mean, I thought this was some rules that were left on the top, but it's don't get caught. Um, which you've spoken about a few times and you said, oh, wouldn't it be funny if we were on a group holiday or something and we played this the entire time? Because I think sometimes if you're playing in the evening, you're always suspecting someone's going to get you. Um, whereas if you play it over a longer period of time, you kind of forget, oh, that's that game we were playing, and then fall for the, whatever the challenge is. I think there's lots of challenges in here. Um, oh, it's a free mini game. So was this free? It was free. Exciting. Looking forward to giving that a try. A bit fun on the social gathering. I see it's eight minute empire. Where um, I'm not the only one fueling a red raven problem or you know, addiction. Um, here it seems. I wonder how much you got that for. I decided to try this. <laughs> Tomorrow. Brand new in shrink. Fifteen. Oh, this looks exciting. Yes. Um. I see a theme, a recurring thing here. Yeah. Uh, look at that lovely. Oh gosh, there's like a yeti kind of figure in here. That looks super cool. Excited to end. There's a stag, and some fish, some mountains. Yeah, this looks great. Where's the price? Another fifteen. Not bad. It feels like it's in quite good condition, like the corners and things look like this. So impressed with that. Portal. Uncooperative cake acquisition. Cake acquisition? What? I've not heard of this game. Um, but I like cake. Another £15. This is something I don't know anything about, so I feel like this is your wild card. Number. I'm, I'm getting a nodding head. No, it's not the wild card number. But okay, I'm looking forward to finding out a bit more about that one. And this looks right up the street. Snoop. Is it because when you wear a hat, you call it a snoop on the hat? Yeah. Um, the artwork looks way up the street. So, Cheatwell's Snoop Murder Mystery Family Board Game. Um, yeah, it could be quite fun. Three pounds, okay. Yeah, I wouldn't have paid too much for that. Three pounds, worth a ton, right?
so that's it for another day at the UK Games Expo. We're going to be uploading one of these every single day, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like, discuss things in the comments, all that fun thing. But for now, we are going to go back to the hotel, play some games with some friends, and get some food. See you tomorrow.